Welcome to episode six of The Six Shifts with Katie Egan Cunningham, Jan Birkins, and Carrie Yates, co-authors of Shifting the Balance, Six Ways to Bring the Science of Reading into the Upper Elementary Classroom, published by Stenhouse Publishers. In this series, Katie, Jan, and Carrie, along with The Six Shifts' Maggie Thorson, address the six new evidence-based shifts that teachers can make to bring the science of reading into the upper elementary classroom. Our previous episode focused on the important role of word reading instruction in the upper elementary classroom. In this episode, the authors talk about the fifth new shift, revisiting fluency instruction. Before we start talking about shift five today, revisiting fluency instruction, Let's back up and have you share a bit about why these shifts are so important for educators to make, even though change to our beliefs and practices, as we know, can be so hard. This is a big question. And you're right, Maggie. Making change is hard. You know, we had to do a lot of soul searching when Karen and I wrote the first Shifting the Balance book, and that soul searching only continued with this new book. Truthfully, we began exploring the science of reading for some selfish reasons. We, <laughs> we mostly wanted to be able to argue more effectively in attempts to defend our past practices. You know, we wanted to solidify our own certainty about the wrongness of criticisms being launched at some balanced literacy practices. And, you know, they had become the latest targets of the reading wars. So it was a pretty intense and vulnerable place to be. And we were convinced that the criticisms were misunderstandings, that they were misinterpretations and misrepresentations. And these were practices we held dear. But what happened along the way to, um, you know, trying to advance a better argument against some some of the criticism. What happened along the way has been really profoundly different from what we expected. And in writing the Shifting the Balance books, we've been truly humbled, re-educated, and in many ways transformed. Our own understandings of how reading begins and develops have evolved as well. And we've definitely made some shifts <laughs> ourselves. And now our hope is that we can offer what we've learned to other educators in ways that invite and support them as they work day to day to help students grow into people who you know, can and want to read and write. And that, that educators can, can find the places where their own practices will benefit from making a courageous shift. Yes, courage for sure. In our last podcast and conversation together, we talked about the chapter about word recognition. How does that connect to this shift five related to fluency? Last episode, we talked about the urgency and importance of word reading instruction that's science aligned. And we also talked about the challenges that grow as the years of elementary school accumulate for kids. So without accuracy, you really don't have fluency. We write about how it's the core of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and there are components to fluency that are well established in the research literature. And we just knew they deserved their own chapter in the book. Beginning decoders have to focus most of their attention on accurately reading words. But once some fluency develops, once they get a little automaticity under their belts, readers begin to navigate the print more effortlessly, which means they can shift more attention. They can shift some focus to comprehension, which, of course, makes reading more joyful. As we move through this chapter, we come to the point of the misunderstandings, which is something I know readers and myself have come to really appreciate in the books. Could you share a couple of the misunderstandings that you encourage educators to rethink when it comes to fluency instruction? Yeah, for sure. One misunderstanding that 
really proved interesting to us is misunderstanding two. And that is that once children have basic decoding skills, then silent reading is more important than oral reading. And this may be one of those things that seems sort of counterintuitive, but one of the best ways to support development of silent reading is actually by giving students opportunities to do more oral reading. And this is because all reading is heard inside our heads and the brain doesn't really know the difference when it hears language, whether it's coming through silent reading or through oral language. Either way, it has to listen to comprehend, even when we're reading silently. So if children aren't managing all of those demands of fluency, managing rate and intonation and phrasing, then what the brain hears during silent reading potentially will cause comprehension to break down. Mm. So oral reading practice then becomes an important way to improve comprehension as well as fluency. So there are some really engaging ways that we can make room for this in the instructional day, which really connects to another key misunderstanding in the book, this idea that fluency practice works best with instructional level texts. We certainly don't want to frustrate children But fluency practice typically involves reading something a number of times through this repeated reading process. And it's about making improvements that children can see, you know, with each subsequent reading. So if there's little to improve on the first time round when children read a text, it won't provide them much opportunity for fluency growth. And the research shows that the ideal texts for fluency practice are short, they're challenging, and they're engaging. As we finish this conversation about shift five and fluency instruction, can you tell us what readers will take away from this chapter? Well, we hope, Maggie, that they'll take away some new understandings about the science and the strong connections between fluency and word recognition. And we also hope they reach some deeper understandings about what fluency actually is. And of course, hopefully they'll leave with some really practical ideas about how to teach fluency in powerful ways that kids will really enjoy. And we hope that they'll be challenged to not think too narrowly about what fluency instruction can look like. Fluency is ultimately the path for readers to comprehend better and to find more engagement in what they're reading. When word reading is both accurate and it's fluent, it it frees up this mental space for kids to really focus on meaning and purpose. And that is the gift of strong fluency instruction in the long run. Well, ladies, I can't thank you enough for your time today. And I look forward to our conversation next time for the final of the six shifts. Shifting the Balance, Six Ways to Bring the Science of Reading into the Upper Elementary Classroom by Katie Egan Cunningham, Jan Birkins, and Carrie Yates is available from Stenhouse Publishers. You can learn more about these six new shifts, the six shifts from the first book, and the companion online classes for both books at www.thesixshifts.com. We hope you enjoyed listening to The Six Shifts. In the next episode, the authors will talk about Shift Six, which is about independent reading. Concerned about throwing the baby out with the bathwater when it comes to reading workshop? Then you don't want to miss the next conversation. We'd love to hear your feedback. Get in touch with us at marketing at stenhouse.com and please share this with your colleagues who you think would enjoy listening too. Thanks for listening.